the most important thing is Dr. Dojer Abdenla, who is my big honor and pleasure to introduce to you very briefly, to not take more time out of his important talk. Um, he is the uh, chief doctor at the Menzikang branch in Bangalore for many years, I think 13, 15 years now, or more? 20, 25. 25. So he's one of the most senior and most energetic doctors of Menzikang. And uh, he's also giving a paper on uh, cancer treatment in, with Sobarikpa tomorrow, I think, tomorrow morning. which is his real specialty. But today he's also talking about autoimmune disorders uh, from a Tibetan medical perspective. And um, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen La. Maru Dele. When I actually, first of all, received the request from the CCTM about the presentation on uh, autoimmune disorder, I actually backed off <laughs> because I thought because there's nothing much I could give. Though I have been, you know, seeing the you know the patients for the last 25 years and I come across lately, I mean lately. You don't see, actually, you don't see, you probably you have not m heard about this disease called autoimmune disorders, maybe 15 years back, 20 years back. It was something which is very rare, very rare. Not much is heard about the autoimmune disorders. And now, and now we see that, you know, the, this disease of late, since last 20, 30 years, you know, we... Uh, used to hear this name from our patients that and then I have been very often very often thinking about you know uh, something like cursing this disease you know and I had a feeling that uh, the, the western biomedical science the doctors the physicians when they don't know when they don't uh, know the etiology the cause of this any disease then used to, they used to name it as autoimmune disorders. So that was my, that was my feeling, my you know, personal kind of feeling. And, but later on, it, it has turned out to be a very serious kind of, uh, very serious disorder. And uh, you, uh, we find that especially in, 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 in places like, uh, in country like U U United States and Europe, it's a very, very highly pronounced kind of disease. And according to the uh, some of the journals, international journals, and uh, and uh, uh, the the reports that it was at actually assuming some kind of a leading kind of a, you know the uh, fatality among the you know, among the populations in the in, in U.S. and Europe. And. Out of the out of this, like more than 70, 76 percent, 76 percent of the kind of uh, the the uh, population of the autoimmune disease happens to be from the women's population. And still, we don't have we don't have enough evidence to show why women suffers more from the this disease, autoimmune diseases. And uh, it was also clearly, it was also clearly found that there was no apparent kind of etiology or any, you know, kind of a, a, a marker or any indications, you know, to kind of suggest that, yes, this uh, it, uh, the pathogen or this cause is the mainly which is responsible for the autoimmune disease disorders. It, and scientists believe that Yes, there may be some kind of microbial, bacterial, viral, hmm? but there's nothing, something uh, to show that, yes, this is something which is responsible for this. So it, is, it was something like uh, which we really don't understand much, the cause of this kind of, uh, the cause and origin of this dis disorder. And according to the Tibetan medicine, according to Tibetan medicines, I was uh, actually trying to find out what could be the possible explanation and definition and uh, to, uh, to, uh, for the Tibetan doctors, what do you mean by autoimmune disorders? And it is my personal observation that in our medical text, 
we have a medical text, we have uh, in, in Zaiju also, we have something called Dua Shedu Baba. Your what? Dua Shedu Baba. There was Sokju Negu Kondola. It was among the nine fatalities of the major diseases. Nine fatalities of the major diseases called Dua Shedu Baba. Dua is the one who lungdi pegesum. Dua lungdi pegesum, it's a, when they are in proper kind of balance and proportion. And these, you know, the uh, elements, they work together in building up our body system. But in other, in, on the other hand, because of some kind of uh, improper diet, improper lifestyle, then this balance gets disturbed. Uh, and then in the dua, the lung chi pegin, instead of walking in unison with each other, in building up our body system, in protecting our body system, they walk in a reverse direction. Number major lu ne yurbe jom. Number major lu ne yurbe jom. And dua shebab, when we think about dua shebab, we mention dua Dua shiba sadang ni dombe si dua. Dua shiba sadang ni dombe. Any sadang dila, and there was also clear. So, <laughs> you have that also tell me if I go on with the Tibetan also. <laughs> you have the problem. Uh, dila, it was a clear indication that in this disease, autoimmune disease disorder, patient have one thing which is very familiar, very, very common the sensitiveness to the kind of the body temperature. Sensitive, sensitiveness you know, and any kind of changes in the, you know, either it's cold or very hot conditions, patients feel that immediately. That sensitiveness to the kind of uh, uh, the heat or to the cold is a peculiar, it's a kind of, uh, you know, symptoms of the autoimmune disorders. Okay. If you treat the disease, you know, this is a very, uh, uh, what do you call it? complex kind of disorders, complex kind of disorders where you really don't have one, sing, one single kind of dua or one single kind of uh, disease, you know, coming into play. You, you find that there are a multiple, a kind of multi-dimensional kind of, uh, you know, the uh, kind of issue in this. So therefore, when, once you feel that, oh, it may be it may be, yeah, there may be something to do with the liver, something to do with the kidney, you know. And, but, it is very important for all of us to be, all of us to be, to, to take a, you know, what called, the, the pulse diagnosis, very important. How does your pulse kind of, you know, beats, especially in, in terms of the different characteristics? Hmm? Maybe the pulse diagnosis may give you better, better kind of understanding, better picture. So in this, there's absolutely, it doesn't really help going after the kind of symptomatic kind of treatment. It doesn't work at all. Because this disease behaves, in a, in behaves very strangely, very, very strangely. So if, if, uh, uh, if one patient comes to you and after your treatment, you know, after, your, after analyzing all the kind of parameters, including the, even the pulse diagnosis, even the urine analysis, and you, you come to a certain conclusion, yes, that this disease could be probably, you know, uh, this, this, this. And accordingly, you have given medicines, you know. And then after one week, after 10 days, patient, sometimes the patient may come back and say, yeah, I feel a little better. And we continue giving the same medicine. And the next week, patient comes back and I become worse. This one's on the dealer, there are some kind of uncertainty in this. Uncertainty in this changes very, very quickly. Changes very quickly. So, therefore, this. 
Sir, so there uh, you could see that immune system, but what exactly is autoimmune disorder? <laughs> according, according to the Western uh, biomedical science, they say that immune system, when they in normal function, it helps protect the you know, body from the foreign invasions. You know? But with the uh, kind of autoimmune cases, the immune system loses its identity, becomes totally confused. So even the helpful kind of cells and tissues are being considered as an enemy, a foreign to the body system. So therefore, the immune system, instead of helping, instead of protecting its own body tissues, and it attacks them, leaving the body totally vulnerable to many kind of uh, serious disorders. Next slide. Yeah. Yeah. Then now, one in, one uh, one interesting factor is that um, they, what they, they observe is that autoimmune disorders are highly pronounced and more sophisticated, more wealthy, more developed kind of countries like U.S. and Europe, and it is very less, very less pronounced in more kind of uh, uh, what they used to call have-nots countries, very less privileged, you know, and uh, third world countries, let's say, third world countries. People who have, I mean, more simple lifestyle, very simple lifestyle, not sophisticated, not highly developed, you know, not genetically, you know, the not genetically kind of, uh, what do you call it, uh, induced, or modified kind of food products. People eating very healthy, or kind of more uh, uh, the organic, more natural kind of food products. So therefore, it, it comes to us that yeah, this is really something to do with the kind of food and lifestyles of the prevailing kind of uh, you know population. So what the important thing is that those especially the highly kind of competitive, highly stressful life, highly stressful life, highly competitive life, and highly modified kind of lifestyle and food products. <laughs> well, this was very, uh, uh, in, it was obvious to all of us that nowadays most of our food products are being, you know, either genetically modified or, you know, a lot of, a lot of pesticides, contamination from the, you know, the insecticides, pesticides, so many, so many kind of, uh, you know, the chemical influences. So, which would definitely alter the kind of uh, normal function of our body systems, especially our immune systems. So, therefore, our immune system started behaving in a very different, in a more, you know, well, it, instead of more friendly, it becomes kind of uh, in the, uh, the dangerous. So there are, now if you say, so what, are, what are the diseases that come, uh, you know, that we can associate with this uh, kind of uh, in the autoimmune disorders? There are many. According to the information available, there is more than, uh, more than 150, 160, 200, in different types of, uh, you know, the autoimmune disorders, but I have come, uh, you know, collected some of the, you know, kind of major diseases which, are, which we often come across, which often see in our own clinic setup. So, which the uh, are considered as for autoimmune, autoimmune disorder among this arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis, hmm, you can, which probably sometimes we could see that oh, easily treat arthri rheumatoid arthritis, but we have to be very careful when it comes to the kind of uh, nature of the disease itself. Hmm. So, is it okay? Do you know? Yeah, was saying that. Do you know? Okay. Hello. Yeah. Some of the uh, uh, arthritic conditions, where no matter how much 
you know, very how much careful, you know, carefully we select the medicines, how much carefully, how much dedication, and you are sure that this is going to work with the patient. But sometimes we feel that instead of uh, giving relief, the patient comes back with more intensity. You know, pain increases, the swelling increases, you know, and you find it very difficult to kind of control such kind, uh, you know, the progression of the diseases. It becomes worse and worse, worse and worse. Not only in physical part, but also in this more, you know, emotional, more uh, the patients on mental level also. Patients become easily irritable. And most of these cases, especially 11, 12 diseases which I have listed here, number one, number one, number one common factor is the involvement of the stress in this. So therefore, we could definitely, we could definitely uh, you know, say with some measure of certainty that no matter whatever it is, there is definitely a very strong kind of, uh, you know, the strong kind of uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, association with the, our, with what we call it lung. Well, lung the deva yu deva di se vi shujre. Re de inaya, we should not confuse. When we say lung, we should not be taken in its entirety. You know, there are in lung kind of, uh, you know, the, 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 the disease itself. You, we have something called, you know, lung seba. Huh? Lung seba, the decreased level of the activity in the lung, increased level of activity of the lung, aggravated condition of the, aggravated condition of the lung. Now you have, you, you have to consider this, whether in this autoimmune disorders, whether you find the lung in a more decreased level, subdued kind of level, or you find the lung in more increased level, or number three, more aggravated condition of the lung. And some, you will come across some of the disease where the, uh, is, um, and uh, lupus, you know, SLE, systemic lupus, erythematosis, and this is some kind of skin, this is also a typical kind of uh, autoimmune disorders, where you could uh, see patients with some kind of flare-ups in the skin, it's called butterfly-like structure, hmm? the, the skin the rashes, which looks like little kind of butterfly-like, you know, the rashes on the skin, it's a typical kind of uh, uh, the skin rashes from the lupus and in, inflammatory bowel diseases. The yung doang, I don't know. And you come across certain patient that first of all you think, oh, this is nothing which I can treat very simply. It's not a big deal though. But then in you know, a patient keep on coming back to you saying that I'm sometimes good, sometimes bad, or sometimes worse. You know, the disease continue, continues. It's kind of uh, becomes very, very chronic and Sometimes to the extent that doctor also feels very, very, very surprised. Now, what is happening? I have been doing my best, but this patient is not responding at all. So, therefore, in these conditions, especially in the, the you know, inflammatory bowel disorders, you could come across certain patients where no matter how much, you know, how much kind of uh, the, the strong medication, strong medications you give, it doesn't really respond well to the, you know, treatment. But then you have missed the point, you know, and the point is especially his stress level. If you could have asked the patient hmm, about his emotional kind of issues, about his, his own kind of social kind of issues and family and you know, all those things, then probably you could get a lot of, lot of information that there's something uh, again in this condition, that some kind of a hidden long, long hidden emotional issues, you know, where the patient find it difficult to express, you know, and then they didn't, they normally don't tell the doctors unless you dig it up and then, you know, bring it out and then you ask the patient again and again. Then sometimes they might say yes. Otherwise, some of the patients find it difficult to share their own long-term suppressive emotions with the doctors. So these patients have also, uh, the, because of that, they have constant kind of irritability in the bowel, in, in your, your uh, lining's of your kind of, 
the elementary canals and the you know the your bowels hmm, leading to so many kind of complications like especially uh, even the irritable bowel movement sometimes you have a constipation sometimes you have a loose motion sometimes you have a severe pain some so many kind of complications multiple sclerosis diabetes type 1 diabetes oh you know, and glen berry syndrome chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy you know, where within a few kind of months you could see that when the patient first comes to you it may happen sometimes the patient comes to you at the last stages also you know sometimes first patient comes at least it you know, in some kind of uh, you know the initial stages but you know you could find that there was a very strong kind of uh, uh, the uh, the progression of the disease within 3 4 months patient may be on the wheelchair also so such kind of uh, such kind of uh, what do you call it uh, uh, such kind of uh, you know strange activity sometimes you find it difficult to really f fathom difficult to understand the walking mechanisms or under such kind of uh, you know the clinical conditions that you know patients all of a sudden all of a sudden becomes uh, all of a sudden becomes very bad and and condition becomes very serious okay i have only 5 minutes left so therefore what i would like to kind of uh, bring out here is the uh, first of all in this conditions so i because i've come across many patients and i've come come across many kind of uh, dear friends also who have uh, you know uh, kind of reposed their faith you know in the tibetan medicine because in the western systems of medicines there are nothing much nothing much honestly nothing much they could do with the when it comes to the autoimmune disorders hmm? but then the mostly is the immunosuppressant the disease uh, the uh, tablets medications were given mainly to suppress the activity of the immune system because your immune system is going havoc immune system is getting in 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 our kind of language is getting aggravated you know it's getting aggravated on the aggravated kind of mode so therefore in that aggravated more it can what kind of harm what kind of imbalances it can bring to the body system so therefore in the, there was nothing much from the kind of you know the 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 modern systems of medicines you know in in uh, the dealing with this kind of autoimmune diseases but from the tibetan medical point of view medicine point of view i think it is first of all most very important to understand the understand the disease understand the disease first the nature of the disease itself and not only the disease the patients on you know emotional issues hmm? patients on mental issues and how best we can <coughs> we can uh, you know they build up the confidence in the patient that this disease can be controlled this is disease can be cured also provided the patient also plays a very similar role helpful role encouraging role Uh, and try to keep in the herself or himself more calm more composed do a lot of uh, kind of uh, the um, uh, meditation certain kind of meditation would definitely help in easing especially now we have lot these days some kind of uh, you know the uh, dif different different kind of uh, you know style of meditation which mainly to help calm down the calm down the kind of the internal kind of uh, what do you call it turmoil or aggravation so that your when the heart when the heart becomes restful you know becomes restful and also have a very strong kind of uh, positive connected uh, connectivity with the you know functions of the nervous systems also so first of all very important for for the doctors to make sure that his you know the Uh, somehow the heart chakra you know becomes stronger patient's heart chakra is being strengthened patient become more relaxed more easy more confident of himself or herself then the treatment will also follow the suit marwe wa 
once the patient's mental condition, this you know, emotional condition is in turmoil, is not aggravated more, on top of that you give something in the form of medications which does not really kind of uh, match or does not really kind of uh, synchronize with the kind of the, the, uh, the aggravations inside, then instead of, instead of giving better relief, instead of you know, the kind of finding uh, good result, we find that it, the disease in fact progresses further. And dietary is very important. The diet should be, diet should be as, as kind of, it, it's, you can also say that we can, di we can go back to the diet which 20 years back, 30 years back or 40 years back, very natural diet. It is very, it is clearly, I mean, without any kind of hesitation that there is something to do with the kind of, uh, in the modern day, modern day kind of uh, diet and, and this uh, the factor where we tend to put a lot of things in the food to make it look like very good, very tasty, very special, very fresh, you know. And now, now, nowadays we come across certain fruits which stays kind of very fresh and, uh, you know, delightfully good looking for you know, six months, five months, six months, and months, which is, tot which is ridiculous actually. You know, totally against our own, you know, the natural biological systems. So, therefore, food is also, you know, the, the uh, considered very, very important in such. So, try to, uh, the, in that re, uh, kind of, uh, kind of uh, you know, scenario, the, the medicines, hmm, which are mainly targeted, mainly targeted to kind of uh, bring out some semblance of harmony to your body system, how best we can balance the lung, chipa, pekin. So here you have see that lung is not going into the lung's direction, lung's channel. Instead, it goes to the chipa channel. Chipa channel, instead of going to its own channel, it goes to the pekin channel. Pekin channel, instead of going to its own channel, so it's a kind of a, the, you know, havoc. So therefore, how best, with the help of the, with the help of the good selection of the medications, how best you can bring up that kind of harmony, where the, where you can expect the lung chipa pekin, and to, to you know the the, the uh, to become more normal in its uh, in its function, and then you know starts to wo starts to flow in its own directions. Probably that could be that, that is very important factor, and the diet and the lifestyle changes. So all this can definitely, can definitely, it may take time, but I'm sure that it can be very helpful because they cannot be, maybe very difficult, but they cannot be also uh, some very single kind of, uh, you know, compounded medi medications which we can give it to the autoimmune disorders and the closer chapter. Mm? But it can be a little more tedious. Uh, doctor have to be also very tolerant in treating the patient. Patients have to be also very tolerant at the same time, you know, and then slowly, with, you know, with that kind of uh, more holistic, mm, more systematic kind of treatment, I think there could be a better solution to this, to this, uh, what do you call it, uh, very complicated uh, issues. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Dorji Rabdenla, for this very interesting talk. We started late, and our next speaker is already waiting, but uh, we'll take two quick questions, okay? One and two. Uh, good morning, Dr. La. Uh, I have one question, and uh, since you're talking in English and the Western point of medicine, uh, my question is that uh, in the English language, is so-called insomnia. Uh, <coughs> As insomnia, do you uh, categorize in autoimmunity disease or do you have any other uh, uh, point to explanation of uh, uh, insomnia? Since insomnia is also not easy to treat. And what uh, you uh, describe what is insomnia also? Mm. I think it's insomnia is mm, uh, basically a symptom. It's not a disease. It's a symptom. It's nether, uh, it's a nether. and uh, kind of you can also call it as kind of uh, sleep, sleeplessness, sleeplessness, or maybe very difficulty in getting sleep. 
So this, this may be a part of, may be a symptom of the autoimmune disorders, but it's not an autoimmune disorder. When you say insomnia, it is not an autoimmune disorder. It may be a symptom, a very small po symptom, you know, of the autoimmune disorders. So with that, I think, b basically more strong lung, lung disease. Lung disease may be involved in that, and there, there are many diseases which also, which also gives rise to insomnia. Mashallah. No. Okay. Very quickly, please. Very <laughs> Shipta uh, short question, please. ดังดีดีรัวคะซังกะซุนะรีซัลท์ดาสนอตคอสรีซัลท์ทะมังกะซุนะตียูเจดีบูจอโรดีบูดังซุรอชาติกิโอรวะคะวายนะชาชูร
Mashua. Mashua, so, okay. Yeah. So we're always thinking about this one. And I'm thinking about the endocrine system is mostly related to the pigging, yeah? So, but every time I'm trying, especially with the Crohn's, colitis, and lupus, mixelki, especially with these, if I'm giving anything which is like a little bit like uh, trying to get the medu to work properly, inflammation goes up again. And then also sometimes they can't even take the basic lung formulas. We have to make separately because mm -hmm. they can't take the do, yeah? Mm -hmm. So I'm just seeking some advice on this one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe uh, you can give the advice privately in the break or afterwards sure. because <laughs> our next speaker is, is really waiting and really. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. much.